we have a great video today. I learned so much while researching this topic and that's why I'm so excited to share this information with you. It wasn't a video I really planned on, but just looking into it, it I think it's pretty fascinating stuff and some very interesting information and great for people who are thinking of buying a house or selling a house in the Phoenix area. So what we're getting into today is what cities in the Phoenix area have been hit worst or best, maybe least is the better uh, way to phrase it, due to this housing market slowdown. Uh, in the Phoenix area in the last three or four months, we've seen housing prices start to come down a decent amount from the peak to 15, 20% maybe overall. And so I wanted to look into if the Phoenix area, about 15% across the board, what cities have been hit the worst? What cities have had the highest percent of drops when it comes to housing prices? And also what cities are sort of recession proof? They're correction proof when it comes to the housing market. Basically saying which cities are having more demand during this recession than other cities. And I think it's kind of a good way to research what cities are popular in Phoenix and what areas are probably going to continue to thrive right when we get out of this slowdown, right when we see housing prices start to go up, which cities are probably going to excel the most. So I think this is a really interesting topic and extremely important for anyone out there looking to buy a house, important for investors, important for first time buyers. They don't want their house to have huge drops in percentages when any sort of uh, market downturn happens. So how I did this study, it's not gonna show, you know, some cities going down 25%. I did the average closings uh, between May to July, so kind of right around the peak, and then the average closings of the last two months in each city. So they're just simply single family homes, what were their price sales in the average or the median in the last two months, and then also the median back in May through July really trying to see which cities had the highest drop. And I think the results are quite fascinating. So let's get into the cities that were hit the absolute worst. Uh, so the ones that had the highest percent drops in the Phoenix area. And just for reference, so Phoenix on average in this, Phoenix we're just using as the centralized average number. The average was about minus 7% for the median sale price between those two month spans on each side, the high and the low. So 7% was the average loss across the Phoenix area. Coming in at the third highest loss, which is a huge surprise, is going to be the city of Scottsdale. Now when I'm talking about why these cities had a loss, this is not data at all. So the data of they had the highest loss is true, but the data of why they're doing it, it's just purely gonna be speculation as someone who lives in Phoenix and works in real estate full time. I work with people moving out of state or moving into state all the time. So I kind of get to know why people are moving to certain areas. I uh, have people reaching out all the time explaining what their favorite city is and why they're looking there. So I kind of get to hear why people are moving to places. So this is simply my personal experience. Some of this isn't data because, well, we don't have data on why people are paying less in Scottsdale than they are in other cities. So my main reason, Scottsdale coming at minus 8.84%. They went from 1.075 million to now their median sale price is 980,000. And I think this one has a little bit more obvious answer than the others, because I think Scottsdale, I mean, it has the name value. It's known for its luxury style. People know it from all across the nation. And I think the biggest reason Scottsdale's taking a hit is simply because of how high priced they are. And the people buying on average in the million dollar price range are really affected by the stock market. And this may be the biggest reason why Scottsdale's seen one of the biggest drops is because people buying in Scottsdale, well, they tend to be wealthy people. They tend to have a lot of money in the stock market, whether it be retirement accounts or just trading accounts, their income is driven by the stock market. So when the stock market has huge drops, Scottsdale's probably gonna follow that a little bit, not at the same giant percentages maybe the stock market will, but people are less likely to pay for a million dollar home if their retirement account just lost 20%. And not only that, some people in Scottsdale simply pay cash. And so if their retirement account is half funded, they're not gonna take half of that amount out to fund a house they're willing to purchase. They're probably gonna pay for something a little bit lower. And people in Scottsdale tend to be business owners or working in major corporations and uh, probably even some CEOs of uh, companies on the stock market. And so if their company is doing poorly in the last year, they are also less likely to go out and buy a million or multi-million dollar home. Thus why Scottsdale has probably seen one of the biggest percentage drops. It comes as a little surprise just because of how famous Scottsdale is. You would think it's a little bit more recession proof, but when you come to understand that it's such high priced and why these people are buying, I think that's why they are coming in at the third highest loss when it comes to the average housing market price. Coming in at number two, and this may be to me the biggest shock of all of them is the city of Gilbert. 
minus 9.12%. The median sale price was 625 in those months between May and July, and now it is 568,000. The second highest loss in the Phoenix area. And this is a huge shock because Gilbert is so popular. I mean, it is growing like crazy. It is one of the most recommended cities. When I have people reaching out from YouTube uh, wanting to move to a city, Gilbert is such a popular area. And for good reason too. That's why I'm so surprised by this. Gilbert has an awesome downtown area. It doesn't compare to like Scottsdale or Tempe, but it has a smaller, nice downtown area that some cities don't have like Peoria, like Surprise. They don't have that cool downtown area where they have great restaurants and bars and stuff like that. Gilbert does. Gilbert also has some amazing family-centered communities. They're higher priced, they're a little bit more luxury side of things, but there's some beautiful large homes and great communities down in Gilbert. And Gilbert isn't, you know, too far out the city compared to other cities on this list, like Surprise, like Buckeye, like Peoria. You would kind of think that those cities on the outskirts would probably be the top ones. Gilbert isn't centralized, but when it comes to how nice Gilbert is, you would think maybe some of these other cities would be losing housing market prices first, but they aren't. My only speculation is this. Gilbert is super popular, and I still think it is. But especially in the last two years, people moving to Phoenix, like I said uh, about people reaching out, some people reach out about Gilbert and they say that's the only city they want to move to. They've done their research. Gilbert has great schools. They have high safety ratings. Uh, they have great jobs. They have great communities. There's so many good things about Gilbert that people say, I only want to move to Gilbert. And when you come into a city saying, I only want to move there, you probably have a specific house you're looking for. Four bedrooms, two baths with a pool. Well, there's not many of those for sale. So those people saying, I only want to move in Gilbert, I want a specific house, they're willing to pay more for that house than its value because they want a very specific thing. And since Gilbert is so popular, people are doing this and the housing market in Gilbert was crazy over 2020 and 2021. Probably even more crazy than any of the surrounding cities in the Phoenix area. And so with that, now that we've seen a slowdown, people are less picky and less willing to overpay for houses. So no longer are people saying, I'm only moving to Gilbert and paying 50 grand more for that house because that's the only house I want. Now they're gonna say, well, maybe I don't have to live in Gilbert. I can also live in Chandler. Or maybe I'm willing to live in Mesa and pay a little bit cheaper because housing prices are down and I don't want to pay that high for a house. And so I think that high demand almost extended Gilbert's prices. And now that people are exploring their options a little more, there's more houses available. Maybe that is why Gilbert is coming in at the second highest loss in median home sale price. And coming in at number one, the highest loss, this is another big shock, not the city that I would have guessed at all. I had people in my real estate office guess what the results are. Nobody guessed this. That is the city of Tempe, and by a big amount, minus 11.3%. The median sale price uh, was 575K near the peak, and now it is 510,000. That is a $65,000 difference for the median sale. If you bought in May through July, your home value on average is probably lost between 60 to $75,000 in the city of Tempe. That is a huge, huge shock to me. And the reason it's a shock is because how popular Tempe is. That downtown area is continuing to grow like crazy. It's been a really strong downtown area. They're growing condos. They now have a hockey stadium that's supposed to go up near the lake. Um, and ASU is down there. And so that city is growing like crazy. So it's quite surprising to see that Tempe comes in at minus 11% because it seems like a popular city. And kind of like Gilbert, I thought Gilbert was super popular. So why is Tempe coming at minus 11.3%? And really... I don't have a great explanation for this. Uh, the only thing I can think of is this. In the last two years, 2020 and 2021, college students were much more likely to work online. And uh, ASU is a huge downtown campus. I mean, that's what drives Tempe is downtown ASU. And not to mention they have a ton of tech companies down in downtown Tempe. Large tech corporations, you'll see their buildings, they have big offices, they have condo lifestyle, all that good stuff. And so what happened in the last two years is students started working online and companies started to allow people to work from home. And so when students are working online, what a huge driving factor in Tempe when it comes to home prices are people who went to ASU and decided to stay in Tempe because they love it. So if you graduated in 2020, well, you could have worked online for your last semester. So maybe you moved back home, you got used to that lifestyle, decided not to stay in Tempe. Now that's probably not the type of person that's raising home prices, 
but it does minimize the demand, at least a little bit. And with Tempe being so large, if half their students are working from home now and not going on campus in the last two years, they're less likely to buy a house in Tempe. And probably what's doing this even more is like I said, these companies allowing people to work from home. So when you used to have to go into the office every day, you'd probably wanna live that condo lifestyle in Tempe, you're right on the water, you could walk to your work, all that good stuff, you have a cool downtown vibe, but you're probably paying a high HOA, that condo is probably more expensive than you want to pay. And so now you decide, well, I can work from home. Let me go live in a little bit quieter, a little bit nicer neighborhood, settle down a little bit. I'll move over to Peoria because I don't have to live that condo lifestyle and I can work from home. If I only need to go into the office once a week, I'll make the 25 minute, 30 minute drive. And so that's a huge shock to me. And those are my only speculations on why Tempe had the highest drop is because maybe people are working and uh, being a student from home now instead of on campus, which really minimizes their demand. I haven't heard of any other big reasons why people wouldn't move to Tempe. I would say Tempe doesn't have as nice of communities as some of the other communities, like I said, like Gilbert or North Peoria or Surprise. They don't tend to have as nice of those uh, perfectly master planned communities. They do have some, don't get me wrong. Uh, but in general, some surrounding cities have those. So maybe if someone's looking for a great community and they can work from home, they may not be picking Tempe. They may be picking some of those other areas because they don't need to drive to their job. So those are the top three worst. Now let's get into the top three best cities, the ones that seem to be the most recession proof, that are well below uh, the average of percentage loss. What are the cities that are doing best in Phoenix? And again, these kind of surprised me, com especially compared to the ones that lost the most. I would have guessed that Gilbert probably would have been one of the highest on the list. And in the end, they're actually, they've been hit the worst. So this has been a big surprise to me already. Coming in at number three for the most recession proof city is actually going to be the city of Glendale. And this is a big surprise to me, but I think there's actually some factors that are affecting it more than on the surface. So Glendale is an older city. They have a few new builds going on near Westgate, but in general, it's an older city. It tends to have a higher crime rate than some of the surrounding cities, especially Southern Glendale. And so why is it almost recession proof, the third highest city in the Phoenix area? And well, my only speculation, so uh, their numbers, they're coming in at minus 6.49%. So they were 462 and now they're 432, only a $30,000 loss, much less than Tempe's $60,000 loss, almost half. Now they are lower price point, And I think that's one of the big factors of Glendale. Uh, with interest rates going so high, people are maybe not looking for a city like Tempe and Gilbert where their prices are well over 500,000, probably an average home is 600,000 um, that a lot of people are looking for. They can move to Glendale, get a similarly sized house, not as nice, not as new, but they can get it for 450,000 because of these high interest rates. They can maybe make that payment. They can't make the $600,000 payment. So I think that lower price in Glendale actually drives more people there. And I think that tends to make, that's kind of what this study is teaching me, is that the lower price homes tend to be more recession proof because when people can't afford the higher price, they go buy the lower price. It's not the reverse effects. People don't go buy more expensive homes when uh, they have lost money. They buy less expensive homes. It's fairly obvious, just something I've never really studied before. And also with Glendale, well, the Super Bowl is coming in February. So the city of Glendale has done a ton of stuff right around the Westgate area. Like those new builds I mentioned, they're putting a water park in, they're putting a hotel in. They are growing that area like crazy. It's starting to become an entertainment hub. They really want it to look really nice for the Super Bowl, which when people know the Super Bowl is coming, it just drives demand to the area in general, especially when you see a, a city willing to put in the money and effort to make that area nicer. And so with some more new builds coming and with the city growing and just overall knowledge, people know more about Glendale as they hear it's hosting the Super Bowl. It's just going to rise demand a little bit and keep that price. And when they go and look and see that uh, you can buy a house for 400000 in Glendale, it's kind of helping its demand. So coming in at number three is Glendale. Coming in at number two is the city of Mesa. And this is really the only East Valley city that is in like the top 10. The only other one is Queen Creek, but that's actually not even in Maricopa County, so I don't really count that one. But Mesa is the only one on the East Valley. So all those great East Valley cities like Scottsdale, Chandler, Gilbert, Tempe, those cities did not perform well in this study. But Mesa did. Mesa coming in the second most recession proof. The average home price back then was 507,000 and now is 475,000, a minus 6.31%. And again, I think some of this is similar to Glendale where their home prices are cheaper, but they also have nice homes in Mesa. 
So maybe people aren't buying in Gilbert. Instead, they're looking for under 500,000 on the East Valley, realize there's nothing in Gilbert or Chandler, and then they go up and pick Mesa, which there's still some good communities in Mesa. Uh, I would say it's not as nice of Gilbert. It doesn't have the cool downtown, but you can also be fairly centralized in Mesa. If you work in Scottsdale, downtown Tempe, or downtown Phoenix, you can work in Mesa and get there pretty quickly. Even if you have to commute to those cities, you can probably get there in under 25 minutes, just depending on where you live in those areas. And uh, also I think they have probably had a little bit of benefit from the work from home environment because they are further out. So you could live in now East Mesa, which would maybe be an hour to downtown Phoenix. You could live in East Mesa and work from home and live in a great community. Now to my surprise, I would have thought Buckeye would have had the same effect, but it hasn't. So that whole work from home idea, it makes sense on the surface, but it's not coming true all across the Phoenix area, just in Mesa alone. Coming in at number one, and there was a city that actually ranked higher than this city, but it's much smaller. So I really count this one as the number one is the city of Peoria. And this was a pretty big shock to me. Uh, when I compare Peoria to some of those cities I mentioned, like Gilbert, like Tempe, like Scottsdale, I tend to think those three cities have a lot more to offer. They all have some great communities in them. They all have great downtown areas. Peoria does not have a good downtown area. You are traveling to those cities for downtown. What I think Peoria does have, and I think this is where it's going to win out, is it tends to have nicer communities for a little bit lower of a price. So North Peoria is in extremely high demand like crazy. It's where everyone wants to be moving to because of its great communities. A place like Vestancia, a place like the Meadows, a place like Fletcher Heights. You can find different price ranges in those uh, where there might be 50, 100,000 more in Gilbert, uh, those exact same communities. So you get some really nice homes and also newer homes. A lot of homes in North Peoria were probably built in the last 10, 15 years, and they still have new builds going on like crazy. They have a ton of plots of land that builders are trying to buy up to put more developments over there. So it is a growing city like crazy. It just kind of surprised me because it feels like Gilbert probably has a little bit more to offer on the surface, uh, but it is more expensive. And so I think that's the only place where Peoria actually takes the cake is they were 550,000 and now they're 525. You go look at Gilbert, they were 625,000 and then they went to 568. So Gilbert is basically trying to catch up to Peoria to where those prices are somewhat closer. And I think if Gilbert was priced as Peoria, it, you'd see similar results. But right now, if you want some of the best neighborhoods in Phoenix and not pay 600,000, Peoria can be a really good option for a lot of people. So it does surprise me because like I said, I don't think it has as much to offer, but I think it's it's general location, it's separated, it's close to Lake Pleasant and it's far out. So maybe again, they did have that benefit from that work from home environment. Um, but in general, it's a really popular area with some really nice home styles. Like most of the homes over there, they're modern, they're newer. They have the open floor plan. They have the nice floors, the nice countertops, everything people are looking for in a house. So if you're under 600,000, you're more likely to lean toward Peoria to get a little larger house than maybe you are in Gilbert. And so Peoria coming at number one, and really the number one overall in this study was actually the city of Tolleson. It's much smaller than Peoria and all the cities we've mentioned actually, but it actually only had a minus 4.31 4.31% drop in home prices. I think the biggest factor of this is that it's fairly central and its price range, uh, it's went from 440,000 to 421,000. So only about a $20,000 drop in your home price. And ultimately, I just think that it's such a low priced area. If people are saying under 450,000, they need a 1,500, 2,000 square foot house. They do a general search. There's probably gonna be more options in Tolleson than most of the surrounding areas close by. So I think Tolleson comes in at number one simply due to its price range. That is the full study. I thought it was very interesting and really not the results I expected. I would have expected a place like Buckeye or Mesa to probably be hit the worst because they're on the outskirts and people are more likely to buy more central uh, when they want to you know, protect their investment just for longevity, but that seems to not be the case. Uh, so anyways, I thought this was a fun thing. Uh, let me know if you got anything from it. If you live in Phoenix, and uh, a lot of this is speculation on why some cities drop more than others. Um, so if you live in Phoenix or if you don't live in Phoenix, want to give me a comment on why maybe you think a certain city did well or did poorly, leave me a comment below. If you want that free moving to Phoenix guide I'm always talking about, it's 100% free. Everything I learned about Phoenix as I moved to and stuff I wish I knew before I moved into this area, breaking down all these cities, breaking down phrases we know in Phoenix, reach out to me for that. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more videos about living in Phoenix.